Good morning, YouTube. It is the last Friday of March, almost April Fool's Day, and almost Easter. It's going to be Easter in two days. So I hope those of you that sell Easter inventory and spring inventory had a really great month in sales. I know I did. And the last few days of this week or earlier this week, Amazon was doing like a spring fling sale, I think it was called. And I noticed my sales had really increased. And then I saw on Facebook that somebody had asked in one of the Facebook groups, have any of you seen a spike in sales with this Amazon spring sale? And I know that I did. So uh, that was cool. I don't know about you. But um, and some of the things weren't even Easter related, um, but I do sell some food products. So I think that people are probably buying them to possibly stuff into Easter baskets and, and, and give as um, holiday gifts. Good morning, JR and Casey. I see you guys in the chat this morning. Um, I really didn't touch upon last week because we had Quincy on our guest with Quick Lists and Quick Link and I forgot what this software is called. I've been trying it. Um, quick quick lines. Quick quick lines. Lines. Yeah, well, yes, quick. Everything is quick, but it's Q I K. Um, so, anyway, he was on last week, but I had been in New Jersey the week before. So, I had missed the one week, came back to having a guest. And now I feel like, wow, it's been a long time since we've had just a regular Friday live. So, lots of things have definitely popped up in those couple of weeks. Good morning, Crystal. Yeah, I thought it was just a spike of sales too. I'm like, wow, I'm really, I'm really killing it right now. And then I, I saw that uh, it was going, going around. So, um, and good morning, Eminem. Uh, today, I had lined up a few topics as well as Lucy. And one of the ones I found interesting is, um, websites that you can sell your Amazon uh, store on. I sometimes get messages from people like, are you interested in selling your store? Do you have any clients that you work with that they want to sell their store? So I know it's possible. I've just never looked into doing it for myself. Uh, I received an email from a website that I was very familiar with from my early days of trying to learn how to make money online. This was prior to me ever doing Amazon. I took some different courses and was trying to learn about building websites, just, just something e-com. And this was, like I said before, Amazon. And there is a website called Flippa. And Flippa is where you can buy and sell domains. So a lot of people back when, when I was looking into it, would create these domains, build a website, get traffic to it, kind of like get it ranked, if you will, on, on Google. And then they would sell these sites for crazy money. And a lot of times, really what you were buying was a really great website name. And there is a link. I'm going to present my screen and share um, this website. Give me yeah, just sure a yours and I'm lining up. I'm lining up. I took a bunch of pictures this week. Yeah. So this is Flippa. And it has this, how much is your Amazon FBA business worth? And so you kind of go through this questionnaire and they will, you can create a listing on here. It's like making an eBay listing, an Amazon listing, any online listing, if you will. And you could list your Amazon business for sale if you were ever wanting to leave the Amazon marketplace. Some people actually make additional Amazon accounts because they uh, register a brand, they create a product, they build up that product. And so there are some sellers with their main store and they also own a few other brands. So uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you're getting rid of your main Amazon store if you're somebody who's wanting to do this avenue. So you can uh, go through this site and find out what your Amazon store is worth. And they guide you through that. So I just thought that was really, really interesting. And then also they have um, Amazon sites that are for sale. So I was curious about that too. I thought, well, what sites do they have uh, for sale? And so I'm going to share that screen as well. And... 
here we go. So here are some Amazon businesses that were for sale. Um, here is a KDP. And look, they're saying that they have a net profit already of over $10,000. They've had it for two years. And so it shows you how ridiculous um, you could possibly sell your store for. Um, so let's see, they're asking $295,000 for their store. They're asking for $593,000. So I thought this would be really interesting to go through. I do know some people who have sold sites on Flippa um, over the years in my early days of, of considering doing stuff like this. Um, but take a look at uh, Flippa and, and at some of the sites for sale. Uh, I don't know that you can see sold listings, sold stores, but it does make me wonder, uh, is it a good idea to maybe create another Amazon store under the umbrella of, you know, your main store? If you have a really great product idea, get that store going, get it to be a registered brand, have A plus content, you know, spend a year or two on it, really growing that store and then sell it on Flippa. You know, that could really be some nice profit. Um, along those lines, so I'm going to piggyback off of that. This is also a site that I go to. They've they've changed up the look of it a little bit, but it is basically Ed's site. And I just want to share if you are looking along those lines or like, I don't know, I'm kind of interested, kind of not. You can go here and I went to the seller communities and they have a community for everything. They have, um, you know, if you want to private label, vet deals, wholesale, funnels, TikTok, uh, you know, human resources, all sorts of stuff here. And then somewhere in here, they have, I want to look at abusive brands, but they have recommendations on lawyers, on sites, on all of the things, um, you know, just going on. So this is a good little website to kind of take a look at as well. Let's see here. You, you can do, this is all his services. I never do that, but somewhere in here is a list of all the things that he recommends. And I have it bookmarked somewhere, but if I needed another lawyer, I already have a lawyer, but if I needed a different lawyer, this is where I would go to kind of see if it's legit or not. And I'm going to talk about that. I have some things that were not legit that I almost clicked on this week. I almost got scammed. I swear, I feel like every week I almost get scammed. I know. And then every time I get an email from Amazon in my account, mm -hmm. because I do get more Amazon related emails than I used to in the past, surveys, things of this nature. And I now, just because of having bogus ones, the first thing I do is click the drop down menu and see what email address did it actually come from. Because a lot of these scammers are really good at making these emails look like they came from Amazon. I, I found it real quick. It was under tools. It's the first one right under tools, third party service directory. So this is for if you had legal issues, you could come here and find a good lawyer. If you wanted product photos, if you were launching a 3PL and you're like, I need a photographer. I've never, I have zero contacts. You can come and find a, a um, photographer here. They've got prep services that they recommend. And, and the thing about going through one of these is, you know, it's not going to be a scam. So, you know, that's, that's the thing I got to say about that is it's not a scam. Sometimes we're like, just give me a recommendation that's not scammy, please. Yeah, I agree because there's a lot, there are a lot of uh, scammers out there in the Amazon world and, and in every industry, to be honest. You see yeah. it all the time and we really do have to be careful. And word of mouth amongst your Amazon selling friends is really the best way to go. Very true. All right, I'm going to share inventory labs new update this was exciting guys very exciting uh i think i can blow it up hold on let's see if i can maybe maybe let's see. get it a little bit bigger yeah, for everybody that's good okay so you know things happen in the amazon world and this one was inventory placement fees and it takes all the third parties a hot minute 
to catch up with the times because it's not like Amazon goes to them and says, oh, in, in a couple months, we're going to be doing this change and this is how you can fix your software. They have to kind of get the change and then adapt. So uh, they now have a launched an estimated placement fee calculator and it will allow you to preview. So to use it, let's see here, you must be using Google Chrome. So that's an important and have the Scout extension installed and running. After adding the item to the batch, you'll see the calculator button at the bottom. So right down, looks like at the very bottom right, if you put in this item, you can go down and see the estimated stuff. So I got to play around with that because I didn't see it the other day, but I think it was because I was on my other computer and I don't have Scout X over on that one. So uh, that's irritating that I now have to do another step, but I guess it's better than nothing. Well, because on my other computer, it's under Packer and yeah. I don't have all the permissions and extensions running on that computer because my Packers don't need it. So yeah, I used to crack up because I had that shared Google sheet with you. And when your Packers were entering in the batch, I remember seeing that not only was I logged in for the Google Sheet, but so was Packer McPacky. It was oh, like yes. Packer McPacky. <laughs> Packer McPacky works out in the warehouse. We didn't want to create a different login for every person because there was, you know, I've had three to four Packers here at a time. And so it was just Packer McPacky. So I Packer McPacky. I love it. Look, yeah. I feel like Packer Miss Packy or McPacky quite often. So yeah. funny. So let me see where that is on the Scout X, that that visual, because I have Scout X installed should, on this computer. Should uh, be right at the very bottom, bottom right, where it says review batch. Right oh, there. okay, because it's going to be in your Google Sheet that you create with Scout X, I think. I don't think it's on the calculator itself. It's in within Inventory Lab. Yeah. If you're in Inventory Lab and you have a batch, and in the bottom right, where you go to review your batch to the left should be the estimate. Okay. Estimate. I thought because it mentioned Scout X, I thought that uh, possibly that that was also on Scout X, the calculator itself. I don't think so. All oh. right. Is there anything else? You can now use this to see any batches you currently have open as well as those you open in the future. So that's where I got to, I'm going to make a batch today and get that going and I'll see that. So now I've got, I've got my other photos now. I think that was it for websites, whenever so, you're ready. Yeah. So I saw here on Amazon, I'm going to share the link to Amazon's forums, but Amazon is going to, it said starting as early as March 28th, which was yesterday. It has not happened to me that Amazon is going to start requiring a two-factor authentication to get into Seller Central. So now it's going to be an extra step. So we're gonna have to have our cell phones nearby to get that text message in order for us to get into our Seller Central accounts. I was wondering if anybody has had this uh, two-step verification process hit their account yet. I have not. I have not. And I just logged in this morning and I didn't get, didn't get hit. So, right. and, and I, I love and hate security. You know, right. it's nice that, that we have security and I, I get that we need it. But on the other hand, it's like the security fails me when, when I need it the most. I was working on taxes all day yesterday. That's, I took the day and, and kind of knocked out. I would say I'm 95% done. I might finish it out today, I'm hoping. But uh, everything was, I switched between my work laptop and my home laptop and every time it forgets my device. I'm like, I only use two devices here. Come on, we can remember two, can't we? Every time. I hit that, remember this device and it Technology is aggravating. As you know, I've had an aggravating <laughs> week with technology. And uh, Lucy's husband is an IT guy, very smart with computers. Lucy herself is pretty smart with troubleshooting. And uh, neither one of them could help me resolve my issue. We're going to work out on it again. But uh, sometimes it takes a village to, to resolve these little technicalities on our computers. <laughs> oh, there's been a lot of weird technical. Can I talk about our other case real quick? Or is Absolutely. it, I don't know. So Tina and I, we've been working on, on somebody else's account and, and basically he needed he or she, I don't know if it's a he or she, but 
pardon me, they needed uh, ASINs were suppressed. And the problem with Amazon is sometimes they will suppress your stuff, but they don't say it's suppressed. You just notice bullet points don't show up or it's not indexed or whatever. And you don't get the flags on your, your inside of your Solar Central to see why is it showing up like that. So Amazon, they, they had already created a case and Amazon had said to go ahead and delete the listings, wait 24 hours, use a listing loader, and then relist with a flat file. And we started doing that, but lo and behold, it was one of their bullet points that was violating Amazon's policies. And all you had to do was go and delete that bullet point and then ask them to refresh the listing and it fixed it. So, so it is so hard to work with Amazon because they will give you wrong information Mm -hmm. how to fix your problem sometimes. And you don't know if it's right or wrong because you're like, well, I'm going to Amazon. It should be right. But I I have dealt with them long enough um, that, that it's just ridiculous on, I, I have actually yelled at somebody on Seller Central and I've said, that is wrong. You're telling me wrong information. I want to speak to your supervisor. And I didn't yell, yell, but I'm firm, very firm, probably a little <laughs> bitchy, but very firm. And finally they gave me the supervisor. I told the supervisor what they were trying to tell me to do. And they're like, yeah, that's wrong. I said, I know it's wrong. That's why I want, that's why I'm talking to you. But uh, tier one, that's why I don't, I don't deal with tier one peoples anymore over at Amazon. They just don't know complicated things like that. And I think they go through the tier one people way too fast. They probably have a, you know, a, what do you call it? Employee flip rate of a gajillion. Right. It's it's just, it's irritating. If you're frustrated with Amazon Seller Central, you are not alone. They are unbelievably irritating yeah. to deal with. <laughs> so let me bring up because we have been we have been working on our Amazon um what do you call it website. So Clinique. Oh Crystal's got a good question. Go ahead, let's answer this and then I'll bring yes. up our website because we've been working on that. Whatever happened to all the people that have Clinique IPs? I have three and just left it because it has no impact, but annoying to look at. Oh And I want to say something about the Clinique thing, and I'm glad you brought this up, Crystal, because I happen to be signed up, even though I don't use it, I happen to be signed up to be an Amazon affiliate as well. So um, I had signed up with that some time back. So as an Amazon affiliate, I get these emails where Amazon says we're launching a sale or check out these deals or Easter's coming up. Guess what I got an email about this week, Crystal? Clinique. Amazon sent all Amazon affiliate marketers an email just about Clinique. Nothing else but Clinique because Clinique is now selling their brand on Amazon and they have taken over Clinique on Amazon. And so, so much so that Amazon is actually promoting them to affiliates. So the Clinique IPs, Uh, are definitely you're going to either have to wait for them to fall off if you could not fight them with your invoices from or or I guess not even invoices because this is an intellectual property thing. Uh, I guess you would have to fight it with Clinique. And my guess is their answer is going to be no and they will fall off. And I, I, I feel your pain because I've had IPs and things like that in my account that that six months feels like five years to for it to disappear. (laughs) Um, let's see here. I found a thread, but, uh, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not finding anything. Yeah. You could possibly reach out to whoever, if, if they provide you the address, because sometimes that you get that, uh, address um, who filed the IP complaint and you can reach out to them. And yeah, how you say it's telling you to edit the listing and take out Clinique, but you can't edit and you can't edit it because you're not authorized to edit a Clinique listing. So you're not going to be able to take it out um, given this unique situation. Um, I have gone so far and I've told this story in, in, in the past here on our channel. I had an issue like this with Kellogg. Um, and so Kellogg is a big corporation and I called everybody I could for, for a long time with Kellogg 
I called human resource department because I wanted to know who the lawyer was of Kellogg. Like, I mean, I was trying to get to the person who can make something happen because going round and round with the company that they hired to file these gets you nowhere. And I actually got a hold of the right man at Kellogg uh, Corporation and got them to remove it off of my account. And that I remember feeling like it was such a victorious win because it's like I went up against Kellogg. And yet there have been IPs on my account from little nobodies that I had to wait six months for it to fall off. So, um, yeah, Crystal, you could definitely try to get a hold of somebody with Clinique. You know, I would Google um, who their attorney is on on record because they they do have that that's public information. And look, I would just send the attorney uh, an email and and just tell your story. I, I do that all the time. I am just authentically real and honest who I am, what I do, and and why it affects my seller account, how it puts my uh, business at risk, and just go for it. Nana says that they just acknowledged and it went away. I've done that too on certain things. It's just acknowledge and they will go away. This is kind of an older thread crystal, but I just posted it. So if you follow that link, you'll get here. I like how they listed this out that, um, you know, if you do not have a receipt, you could submit a plan of action and you really need to address all of these things, the root cause, the corrective measures, the preventative measures. So this was a good little little thread to kind of give you a guide on how to do a plan of action for that. I don't know if they're even taking that now, though, because plans of action, I have not seen a request for plans of action. Look, you better not on Twitter before it comes out of your mouth because you may get one today. I will say that if you acknowledge things and it goes away, just know that that violation still stays on your account somewhere in the back end. Yeah. And, you know, if you've done it and, and if you keep getting them, keep getting it, it, it does escalate you being a threat higher and higher within Amazon's system, if you will. So it is always better to fight it and get it removed before you acknowledge it. Um, just because I, I remember, I think it was even in Ed's Facebook group, is to avoid acknowledging things at all cost because mm -hmm. you're still admitting to Amazon that you have done wrong. The other thing I want to say with that is I've had times where I have that acknowledge button, but I also have a fight button. Mm -hmm. And if you pick the fight button, you never get the acknowledge button again. Yeah. It just won't, won't go through you just don't get it again. Yeah. And so you're now stuck fighting. And if you don't have a leg to stand on, obviously you don't want to click the fight button. If you have good information or you think you have a fighting chance, then by all means fight. But and if you're like, oh, I'm alone this. with Clinique. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a tough one there. Yeah. You're um, not alone with Clinique. Lots of sellers sold Clinique. Some people almost make yeah. their entire living on Amazon just on Clinique. So yeah. ugh, imagine how many they had. I, Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a tough one. I never found any clinic that was worth selling because my my third party stores always had garbage in the makeup selection. All their makeup had been tried and used on. I mean, like I wouldn't even buy it for myself. People go in there and they just open stuff all the time. And we have really crappy people in my neighborhood. Crappy people in the neighborhood. All right. So this is our website. We wanted to officially announce it today. I know some of you have we may have. We may have uh, shown just for, I think we've shown a couple of people of our friends, our website. So we're, we're working on building this out, but we felt we finally had a, a, uh, something that we could show publicly here. Which... <laughs> it's not easy building your own website. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're trying to do is like, I'm building out the Amazon acronyms and definitions. This week, I'm trying to add like free downloadables. So some of the some of the how to's that we've built over the years that we're fine with sharing, we're going to have it here. If you go all the way to the bottom, you can find our Facebook and the uh, what we call the YouTube and the Facebook. Um, we've got we're building out our coaching stuff, and this is mainly because Gumroad and Fiverr take a huge percentage of our cuts. And we have clients that want to have more of a monthly service or a whatnot that we do with. And so we wanted to have a website that kind of put everything together. And then for our bundle stuff, we will be kind of cutting off the bundle group probably in the next couple of weeks here. And then bundle stuff will be 
singular courses that you can purchase one time and have access to and piece it out. So you don't buy the entire thing. You could just buy whichever section you are needing to learn on that. So that is the direction that Tina and I are going with this year. We've been talking about it a lot since, I don't know, since last, whatever, Thanksgiving, maybe. Right. Um, yeah. And so if there's ever anything anyone would want instructions or tutorials on, let us know and, and we can create that. We're trying to price everything incredibly reasonable um, because, look, cost so much money. And I feel like there's so many people out there that just charge so much money. Um, another thing I would like to discuss is that I got an email. I don't know if anybody else did. I've never seen this before, so I think this is new. Um, and I downloaded mine this morning. So Amazon is now giving you FBA donation certificates for your tax season. And so if you go oh. in to uh, the seller forums, there is a certificate. Now, I didn't use it this year because I only learned about this about three days ago. So Lucy, while you're in the middle of your taxes, you, you know, I know, I know you're going to finish this. Okay. Yeah, check this out. So um, for those of you, when you do a product removal order and you have the option to uh, liquidate or for Amazon to donate, if you ever chose the donation button, or if you want to continue to choose the donation button, um, you will get a, uh, you'll be part of this donations program and you're going to get a donation certificate that you can use on your taxes when you do your taxes. And I, I did click these links and it actually goes to a particular company. I can't remember the name of this company, but it must be who Amazon is affiliated with where they give their donations to, but you can take advantage of, uh, getting those donation credits with an actual certificate to file with your taxes. So I thought that that was really great information. I don't know if anybody wants the link to this, so I'm going to post it here Please. in our chat. Please. Um, yeah. And this will take you to that FBA donation. Sorry, that's such a long link. But that will take you to the forums and within that post, there are the clickable links to take you to the areas that you will need in order to download your certificate. Can you can you send that to me in Messenger too? Because I can't click on our links in yeah. on this end sure of can. things. All right. So this week I just took a bunch of screenshots, man, of just shenanigans that that are happening in our world that are applicable to us. This one really frustrated me. Um, and I also received an email on Fiverr asking about all of the paid review programs that are out there that will pay you for reviews. And it's basically review manipulation. And they were like, well, which review manipulation do you do? And I'm like, I don't. I try to follow the rules. And this one was uh, some guy named Eric Brun takes care of everything. And basically they buy the product they give them a five-star re review. They get to pick which items they want, and then they get reimbursed through PayPal. So, I mean, this is actively getting shown over on Facebook. And my thing is, is, okay, well, what, how is Amazon combating this? I hope Amazon is like looking at this. And then I want to show, it's the last one here. I received this this week. I got... $25.71 or something. And it says, here's a check and close for your share of the settlement between the FTC and Nature's Bountiful Company. And I know somebody posted this morning on our Facebook group about Nature's Bounty. Uh, it's been restricted now. Nobody can sell it. Um, there's no third party apps or, you know, you can't, as resellers, we cannot resell Nature's Bounty which I know people were reselling tons of nature bounty from Walmart or Walgreens and stuff. But uh, they actually sent me a check for $15, $25. And my husband's like, um, do we cash it? So first we needed to see, is this legit? <laughs> like, I don't want any of those check scams. Just because it says it's the FTC doesn't mean that it's actually the FTC. But lo and behold, it was real. It was a real lawsuit that happened. And I looked in my history of what I've purchased and it's, a vitamin, something that I've purchased many a times. So I did have lots of nature's bounty purchases in my account. So that's probably 
you know, that's what it was tied I to. I called nature's bounty. I didn't get a check. Where's my check? <laughs> well, what's interesting, it says this was what they got found guilty of is used the ratings and reviews of its popular products to deceptively inflate the ratings and reviews of newer products and boost their sales. So I am wondering, Tina, if they, you know how when you can rank up, rank up something and you kind of switch out the product or switch out, switch out things or add it to, a chill, you know, add it to a parent and get your child ranked up. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's it. If that's what they did. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I've never followed enough to tell you. Yeah, I haven't either. I really couldn't speak upon it. Heather says she can sell nature's bounty and I'm restricted in nature's mate. So I'm wondering, I'd have to go look, but I'm going to go look later. I, I don't want to look right now, but. And are, and are they the, both the same company, nature's bounty and nature's mate? Is it the same parent company? I'm curious. So that's uh, something else that would be interesting. Mine so, says Bountiful Company under brand names Nature's Bounty and Sundown. Sorry. It's okay. And Sundown. Yeah. Right here. So the Bountiful Company, which sells vitamins and supplements on Amazon under the brand names Nature's Bounty and Sundown. So Heather's saying she can sell Nature's Bounty, but is restricted Nature's Made. So I don't know if Nature's Made is related to Nature's Bounty. This is a lot of nature for a Friday. I'm not quite ready for all the nature here. <laughs> <laughs> okay then uh let's see here this is the next one i reposted this in our facebook group so if you want to go mm -hmm. read all the comments and everything but basically Coles is locking down and they went from you know how on their coupons and the coupons not available for adidas and Nike, Nike, i think champion like a lot of the bigger name brands Instead of saying it's not available in these brands, the coupons now say it's only available for these brands because it's less. Yeah, because they've knocked out everybody, everybody and all the things. Yeah. It's, it's utterly. Yeah, their coupons used to be so good in their early days. I mean, yep. it used to be uh, so great. So I think I, I, think I po put all of the things here. And basically people are talking about... Um, Okay, Carter's Clothes was added to that coupon, so you can't do Carter's Clothes anymore. And uh, this is the placement fee, so I want to talk about that next, but we'll finish up Kohl's here. Uh, Kohl's is struggling as a company, and I can see why they're they're doing a coupons or lack of coupons or whatnot, but they're going to have a rough, rough go at it this year. I don't know if they're going to be around for, for a long time. And the same with... Uh, what was it Dollar General? They're shutting down a bunch of Dollar General, Dollar Trees. Did you see that one? Uh, yeah, one of the stores I know they were, and Dollar Tree was upping prices again this year. We're going to add, add the $5, $5 and $5. Mm -hmm. to, Which to, are a little bit better quality, so of course they're going to ask the more money for them. Well, look, they had for Easter time, for anybody that went into Dollar Tree, they did have Peeps themed um, plush blankets. I don't expect something like that to only cost $1.25. I mean, unless it's gonna be a tiny little placemat size of a blanket. I mean, how how can you make money on a blanket for $1.25? So um, I can see things like that, you know, costing more. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to see what they, what they do. Um, we watched this good video on how the Dollar Tree is definitely going into impoverished areas and making them and keeping them more impoverished by some of the things they do. And that Dollar, it was Dollar General, which I think aren't Dollar General and Dollar Tree under the same parent company. Do you, do you remember? Um, yes, they are. No, it's um, Dollar Tree and, and Family Dollar are part of the same. Okay, then maybe it was Family Dollar. Fudge, it was another dollar. It was a dollar one, and the scam that we were watching about it was one of those things on YouTube where it was highlighting these scams. Is that they would say like kitty litter is is eight ninety nine or seven ninety nine. You'd get up to the register and they'd bump it up by anywhere from ten cents to a dollar or something, and they got caught doing that. So there's a big fraud case going on with that, and that was interesting. I, I know that some companies do that, but Boy, to actively run it and and implement it as as something on how you run your business, that's just, they should take them to the cleaners on that. 
Now the child in me, because I can't help it, because I'm an immature 12 year old boy a lot of times, is it cracks me up how the Dollar Tree in the UK is Pound Town. I'm and sorry, what? You see that Pound Town? This is in the UK, that's their Dollar Tree. Everything's a pound at Pound Town. But my American juvenile ways just finds that funny to go to Pound Town. I had to share. I just thought of Pound Town when you were talking about the Dollar Trees and those stores closing. <laughs> that is just. Yes. Call me a 12 year old. Oh, my God. Okay. So here it is. It's Family Dollar. So Family Dollar under fire for overcharging. Yeah. If you want to go look up the thing and, and uh, yeah, it was at all. Well, Family Dollar does have a lot of higher priced things. It's, it's actually a really nasty store. If you've ever been into a Family Dollar, I just feel like all of them are gross. They stink. Yeah. It's just a yucky store. So I have been in them to see what they had and, and things like that. But uh, they do, they do have a lot of items overpriced, but then they have their regular things and they're like, when, when, Remember when two liter sodas used to always be like a dollar and then a dollar ninety nine? You could still always get uh, the sodas in there, but then they would have the other things with the upcharge, thinking that you might buy all the those things too. Yeah. Oh, oh Crystal, me too. Yeah. Me too. I miss a lot of the. I mean, I still do get some good things at Kohl's, but it has definitely progressively gotten harder over the years. Yep. Yeah. I used to do the bra sale that they have over on Thanksgiving weekend. It's one of the days on the, the Black Friday week there and did really well. And now when I went in, all of the ones that were like all the ballies were already being sold by Amazon. Amazon took over and is selling ballies yeah. for $15 a bra. It's just silly. Yeah. All right. This was a great post by um, Saad. Uh, yeah. I love I love seeing his post on there, but he went through and recalculated for his cost per item and, you know, they go up. So it used to cost him 38 cents. Now it's 50 cents instead of 56, 79. So thanks for sharing that. That's always nice to see what others. Yeah, was a really great share. So he, what he, he was saying is that he was tracking what his shipments cost him before these new placement fees what it was per item for shipping before and then his numbers now after. And the final tally was, um, it was a slightly more. It says here on his post, he says, um, let's see, I'll, let's just, I can't guarantee by the way. I think this is the last two paragraphs. Okay. Um, yeah. It was crazy that both numbers were higher on the option that they suggested to get the items available sooner. Anyway, I opted for the 3225 versus the 5092, and I chose to let them distribute the items. Um, but it says it above it. Right here, this one. Placement fees. I remember were reading it. So one had placement fees of 1225, the other was 1292, but shipping was $20 versus 38. So right. It ended yeah. up being about, yeah. Anyway, it was a very interesting post. I know part part of that post is cut off, but if, if you guys are in the Facebook group, find that post because it was a really great share, I thought. All right. And then I want to go back to scammers because this this really <laughs> boiled my blood. I mean, I really hate scammers. And I've been watching the, the scam guys that go and bait the scammers and shut them down and everything. That's freaking hilarious to listen to while you're packing. But it, it's a, it's scary too. Uh, you know, it's funny to just have them mess with the people, but uh, the reality is, is I wish they did, they didn't they weren't there. So I had seen this, and it was interesting because it says three free gift for packages orders over thirty nine, and I'm like, what is this Alibaba little pure doodad? And it says it's for Bath and Body Works, but if you look up, it's EarthOli dot com, and I'm like, what the heck? So they were promoting candles for $2.90. This is just a horrible Photoshop job. I don't even know what's going on with that. This is a terrible Photoshop job. And they're taking Bath and Body Works items, putting up a, on a shell company and running them on the Facebook reels. 
mm-hmm. and promoting them. And if they get just a few people to go and buy, they're taking off with the money. There's no way, no way that any of this is for reals. So, and they chose scents that were from Christmas time, making it seem the obvious that they're on clearance. Right. But they also added in like this eucalyptus is a yes. very, very popular one. Same with champagne toast. That's a very yeah. popular one. Yeah. I, I deal in a lot of Bath and Body Works. Um, <laughs> She's like, I, I got one that was on a Ma- Michael Kors. I kept getting a Michael Kors handbag. You know, we got our free handbag for, you know, giving some feedback or whatever, or a handbag for $10 or whatever. And then they have a whole bunch of people posting that, oh yeah, I got mine and showing pictures of it. And if you go and you look it up under Snoops, it's, it's a fake handbag scheme. So I was like, my gosh, I bet you tons of people are buying their $10 handbag. They don't ever get a 10. Either they get a handbag and it's a $2 handbag or they never receive it. And the company is gone. I actually did get fleeced a couple years ago with a backup camera and I bought it and that company dissolved and I never got my camera. So I went over to Bath and Body Works. Lo and behold, they were not $10. And uh, that was kind of a bummer. So uh, that it's just being marketed. I'm telling you, it comes across a lot in my feed. I'm talking, so much. You know, sitting there scrolling and it's, it's sad. It's sad. I wish that there was something to combat those, that Facebook, Instagram, all of the TikToks and stuff would go through. I pulled this one, Meltables. Oh, it's so funny because I was going to share that today and I even made a little banner for it to request to remove your meltable FBA inventory by April the 15th. <laughs> so all the Easter bunnies you didn't sell, your chocolate bunnies, your chocolate eggs, any any chocolate or even non-candy things that are meltable. Yep. We had a good question in the bundles group about, I think she used the reference jelly beans and said, you know, if you list jelly beans and you mark them as non-meltable, will you have to remove them during multiple season? And here's what I know, and I've done it and I've, I have experience, so I can tell you the truth. You, when you're making your own listing, you can choose to say whether it's multiple or not multiple. You can do that. And if you're the only seller on that, I would suggest to you to not send an FBA. We'll take, we'll take chocolate because chocolate has a low melting point. So let's say I made a chocolate chocolate box, whatever listing and marked it as non-meltable. I could totally sell it and it's nobody's going to say nothing. But if I start sending out FBA chocolate boxes in the middle of July and customers get melted box after melted box after melted box, Amazon will go in there and change your listing for you and mark it as meltable. And when that happens, you have to recall all of your product and uh, hopefully you don't have too much there. And when you get it, Amazon will a take like three months to send it back to you. And it will be a hot mess when it gets back to you. It will be broken, damaged, all melted. They'll leave it in the truck for three days. I don't know if they do this on purpose or they just to, like they don't handle your returns very well to begin with. So you run that risk. So if you're say going to do chocolates and I'm kind of okay shipping chocolates depending on the weather, but I'd say up till like May 1st, May 15th, maybe, and then cutting it and not sending any more into FBA. Jelly beans, anything that's in that kind of got a little more umph to it and takes a lot, I will stretch out to maybe June 1st and then stop stop sending in FBA. And then that way I will FBM during June, July, August, maybe even September, and then send it back in. What this allows you to do though, is if you have Halloween bundles and you want to send it in before that multiple, what is it, October 1st or October 15th, you know, you could make your Halloween bundle, claim it's non-meltable, send it in before that multiple date so that you can get it in and just hope that it's not too hot out there for wherever it's going and becomes a hot mess. I've done that with peeps too. <laughs> Melted peeps look pretty bad. <laughs> peeps look really bad. But when when Easter, you know, there was one year where Easter was around the 10th or the 11th or something. So I I made them non-meltable, but then got them out of the warehouse by whatever, yeah. May 10th or something. I do want to discuss one last thing before the end of our show. And that is Amazon has rolled out a new 
coupon pricing requirement. I don't know if anybody has seen this. And I want to say it started a couple weeks ago. Oh, here we go with me, boring Lucy. No, I'm, just <laughs> I'm not in because I didn't have my coffee. <laughs> Nobody made coffee this morning. I'm struggling. I got to go make a pot at work here. So for any of you that launch new products, create bundles, and you like to use a coupon on your listing to get sales, Amazon is now making the coupon policy in their favor more than yours. So I, yeah, I, yeah, so here is Amazon's new coupon pricing requirements. Now I've used coupons many times over the year. I might put, you know, a dollar off or $5 off or 10%. You know, I just did whatever I felt like. Well, now we can't do whatever we just feel like. So it started on March the 12th. Coupons will now be subject to new pricing requirements as we continue to improve the coupon experience to build customer trust and in turn, an even better excelling experience for you. And as you know, this part coming from Amazon is never true. Nope. Coupons are still required to have a discount percentage between the minimum of 5% and the max of 50% off. Products will also be required to have a sales history before they're eligible to run. So why that's hard is a lot of people launch a new product, a new listing that they've created, and they want to do a coupon to entice sales. But you have to have a sales history before you're eligible to run it. So that part is kind of stinky. And a promotion price lower than either the price, the was price or the recent lowest price. So it makes it for people who maybe launched their product that they wanted to maybe launch it um, at $20 when they intend to actually sell it for $30, but they want to put it on the low side to get some sales as they slowly um, get their product up higher to where they actually want to sell it. If you do that to entice sales, you're going to have to have your discount uh, your coupon discount be lower than what your promotion price was. And I think they go back to like 90 days. But anyway, if you are somebody who runs coupons, please check out Amazon's new coupon pricing requirements to make sure that you have an action plan before you just go willy nilly pricing things lower, running sales um, if coupons are a big part of your business. That's it. The end. That's it. The end. <laughs> that was me. Oh, okay. April said that was you with the jelly beans. Okay. I couldn't yeah. remember who it was, but it was a good question there that I wanted to just talk about with the meltables going on. I got to see if I have any, I don't know if I have any meltables. I've got a lot of things to do. I've got a lot. And I wanted to see if I could do nature's bounty. So I'm going to see if I'm, I'm so now you're curious about that too. So for those of you who are still here live with us, uh, <laughs> give our channel a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. All of those things help us in the YouTube algorithms and we really appreciate it. And as you guys know, today is always Finance Friday for me. So when we are done with our live, I'm going to go crack in my finances and some other things I need to get done. A lot of that was put on the back burner with my trip and getting my taxes done. Um, so I will definitely have some some catching up to do. I'm getting closer and closer to feeling like I have the normal workload again. <laughs> I don't think I ever feel normal. It's just a <laughs> round of different feelings. Uh, Nature's Bounty for me is all blocked out. So it says not available, not available. So they definitely have, have locked that one down. What was, did she say nature's bounty or nature's, I got to scroll up. She said she can sell nature's bounty, but she's restricted in nature's maid. Nature's maid or was it the other way around? I'll just she said, me. I can sell nature's bounty. I am restricted in nature's maid. I can sell nature's maid, but not nature's bounty. Are we opposite? Yep. You're opposite. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Interesting indeed. All right, so you've got finances. I've got, I gotta go through and, and finish out my donations for work so that I can get that done. 
That is that is on my list. I did not bring my dog today, which is kind of kind of happy, kind of sad. I like to have my dog in the office, but she has things to do today. She has things to do today. She's got dog dog things to do. Well, my son's in town, so I wanted him to have time with the dog. So there are pets to be had and licks to be licked and treats yes. to be eaten. Yes. Yes. Oh, a dog life. Yes. <laughs> now, what are you doing this weekend? Anything good or anything coming up? What are we doing? Well, Easter. Easter oh, is right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, tomorrow or today I've got to get to the store. Our family for all holidays does a does like a potluck thing. So that way not one person is in charge of all of the food. So yep. I have some things that I will be bringing. So I need to go get the ingredients and get them together tomorrow. What are you making? I am making um, a strawberry dessert, a salad and carrot cake. That sounds good. Yeah. So those are the three things I'm contributing. My mother's doing the ham. She's doing, I think, potato salad and some 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 kind of Thai salad that she's going to make. And I think my son and his girlfriend are doing deviled eggs and what else? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my son is in town. So we're doing we're going to do a ham on Sunday morning. So it'll be our thing ham and they're making me a cake this weekend because our Tina and I's birthday is coming up and yeah. he's in town to celebrate that. That's why we went out oh, to do yeah. yesterday. Crystal says she can still both. Lucky you. Whatever Crystal. Whatever Crystal. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Crystal's gonna be buying all the nature's bounty. She's like, wait, I need to buy a lot of that so I can get a check from the FTC. Well, I, yeah, I didn't get it from selling. I bought it. I got it because I bought my vitamins. Yeah, there. yeah. I just couldn't believe it. I've never gotten one of those check. I've never gotten a check from any of these things. You know how, yeah. how they have the class, class action lawsuit suits. Yeah. I never get anything. I've been part of so many of those. I never get nothing. So I was so surprised. Twenty twenty five dollars, twenty five whole dollars. Look, you can use that to buy some more vitamins. Sure. Sure. <laughs> All right. Oh, April's birthday is in April as well. I wonder if the other is. April, and we might have a lot of April birthdays, but happy birthday, April. Uh, pre, pre, uh, what is it called? Early birthday, early birthday for us, yeah. which I think at this age, we ought to get more than, we get more than a day when you get to our age. It's definitely like a week, <laughs> a week long celebration. That's the rules. It's yeah. the unwritten rules. All right, everybody. Well. It was lovely chit-chatting again today on Friday. Yeah, and everybody have a great uh, Easter weekend for those of you that celebrate Easter. And everybody else will just have a great weekend. So we'll see you next Friday. Yep. Have a good day. Bye.